Sometimes MMA goes off script, folks. And for this video, we're compiling some of the biggest WTF moments we've ever witnessed. And we're going to kick things off with a total classic, the bizarre third round between tough veteran Nate Quarry and the man later branded as MMA's running man, Khalib Starnes. All right, look, not wanting to engage is one thing, but when you're so timid in a live cage fight that your opponent has to literally try and mock you to get a reaction, yeah, that's not really a good look. Seconds remains of the fight. Oh, wow. Nate Quarry. That's some terrible stuff from Starnes, but we'll give Quarry a 10 out of 10 for turning the fight into an iconic moment. Shinya Aoka is a legend of the ring, there's no denying it. But these post-fight antics are truly among the most reprehensible in MMA history. Aoki has just managed to secure a submission over Mizutu Hirota, cranking his arm so badly that it eventually snapped. Hirota in trouble! Aoki applying the... Looks painful, right? Well, Aoki decided to literally add insult to injury by immediately flipping the bird at his fallen foe while laughing in his face. That is a bizarre and quite ugly post-fight scene. And how about this classic Nick Diaz moment? The dude decides to try and out-taunt the great Anderson Silva, and for our money, he succeeds. It's all well and good watching this one back, but watching it live was a different experience entirely. One of MMA's truly hilarious moments. George St. Pierre is a man known for many things. His insanely effective takedowns, his precise jab, his love of dinosaurs, and his nipple pinching. Well, the great former 2-8 world champion seems to have his own pre-fight ritual. And to be honest, who are we to tell him otherwise? It clearly works. Watching Michael Pereira fight is not any old combat sports experience. No, this ranked welterweight contender is liable to produce some of the most insane moments you'll ever see in an MMA cage. And while we could fill an entire video with crazy moments from him, how about the time he decided to try and pass his opponent's guard by backflipping over it? As far as stoppages go, we can't think of a stranger one-punch finish than Edson Barboza's TKO of Shane Burgos. It wasn't like the punch itself looked like anything special, but instead, that delayed reaction was truly terrifying to watch in real time. I mean, one second Burgos looked good, then maybe four seconds later, his body just decided to shut down. Talk about a highly unique finish. When Kevin Holland fights, the UFC really should just hang a mic over the octagon, because this dude likes to talk a lot. And one of his most hilarious moments came when he was taking on the great BJJ specialist, Ronaldo Jakar Souza. While on his back, Holland decided the time was perfect to tell Jakar how he once dreamt of this exact scenario, something that caused Souza to laugh. Oh, nice duck. <laughs> oh, he's telling me it's nice. I had a dream about this. Within seconds of this, Holland was firing off hammer fists from his back, turning the tide dramatically for the KO finish. This one is one of the most blatant examples of eye gouging you will ever see in combat sports. And she did it with the referee standing right there. Priscilla Cachuera obviously needed to get out of that choke, but in the process of trying, she basically ruined her reputation. Although for some reason, she remains on the UFC roster totally unpunished for her clear cheating. How do you deal with a six-year absence from the octagon? Well, if you're Nick Diaz, you open up your comeback fight with a jumping, spinning back kick. That's how. You really couldn't script a more Nick Diaz-ish opening than that. A true one-in-a-million fighter. Israel Adesanya is a guy who does rub a lot of fans up the wrong way. But even if you're not on board the Izzy train, you gotta admit that this was pretty funny. Marvin Vittori was totally outstruck during their title fight, and for some bizarre reason, he spent the final 10 seconds of his first shot at UFC Gold hammering away at Israel's leg with his fist. So yeah, can you really blame Adesanya for mocking him? Chris Weidman is best known to the masses for his pair of wins over the great Anderson Silva, the first of which came by shocking KO, and the second when a checked leg kick caused the spider's leg to snap. So when Weidman's own leg broke in an eerily similar fashion when he faced off against Uria Hall, it was one of the cruelest twists of fate imaginable. Factor in that Uria Hall was once seen as the successor to Anderson, and yet 
yeah, you've got some really weird dramatic irony going on. Speaking of messed up legs, Sean O'Malley was putting on a masterclass against Andre Sukamta up until his leg gave out in round three. And so what did his opponent do? Well, with Sugar Sean very clearly hopping on one limb in front of him, Andre, for some totally unknown reason, opted to wrestle, giving him a pathway to victory. Literally, the only pathway to victory. An all-time terrible fight IQ moment, but hey, maybe the dude was badly concussed. Uh, who are we to judge? The next one just makes the list on the eye test alone. Jamahal Hill hit Johnny Walker with a damn near perfect shot. But the way that Walker's body reacted to the punch made this KO what it was. It was like an electric current was sent right through him. Talk about a crazy fight ending sequence. Oh, this next one is just plain nasty. All right, look, fighters are people too. And like all people, sometimes nature calls. But for Justine Kish, the timing of this rather unsightly moment could not have been worse. We get it, we get it, it's not her fault. But really, going for a number two in the cage? Yeah, that books you a place in this video. On the long list of unwritten rules in MMA and combat sports as a whole, etiquette during close and intense face-offs doesn't usually need to be explained. Sure, all personal boundaries go out the window when you really need to make eye contact to sell a fight, but planting a kiss on a guy like Heath Herring is never going to be a good idea. Oh, and this dude learned that the hard way. Just for the record, we feel zero sympathy for it. Anderson Silva versus Michael Bisping was an important fight for the middleweight division for a variety of reasons. But it also contained one of the strangest round endings of all time, where Bisping, for some odd reason, decided to try and have a conversation with the referee about his mouth guard with the most lethal finisher in MMA history standing right in front of him. Yeah, we know, sometimes the ref will jump in, but that was not the time for it, Mike. And what's crazier still is that when Silva landed a flying knee kick, what looked like a clean KO, the end of round bell rang, and Anderson had to be coaxed down off the side of the octagon mid-celebration to resume the fight. He would go on to lose on the scorecards. Greg Jackson is a legendary coach for a myriad of reasons, but you'd be hard-pressed to find a more iconic moment in his back catalog than when he told George St. Pierre how how little he cared about the groin injury he had just picked up. I don't care. I don't care, George. Hey, look at me. This is where champions remain. That's not the type of coaching that most fighters would kill for. Or, at the very least, it's one hell of a soundbite. John Jones and Daniel Cormier had a rivalry that went beyond sport. It was like these two polar opposites were put on this planet to try and wear each other down, even beyond their fights in the cage. And so, when Jones decided to prematurely celebrate after a dominant five-round performance against DC in their first fight, just to rub it in, Cormier followed suit, dropping his hands early in acknowledgement of the loss. Jones, being Jones, decided to capitalize on the scenario he had created and proceeded to sucker punch Cormier before the bell actually sounded. Look at this. Goes oh! the distance! So yeah, this fight clearly did not solve anything between these two. You want to know what true confidence looks like? True confidence is taking a fight with an icon like Steven Boner, 20 pounds above your natural fighting weight, and in the first round, standing up against the cage like Anderson Silva did with absolutely no respect for his striking. This was the type of moment that you just never see in the sport. We can't even imagine how wild this was to see live. While we're on the subject of things that just never happen in the cage, how about about when Max Holloway decided to risk a comfortable decision victory against a known power puncher in Ricardo Lamaz by pointing to the floor with 10 seconds left and inviting him to stand his ground and trade. Yeah, Max is just built differently. Not only did he keep his word, he beat the brakes off Lamaz in those final flurries. There's nothing worse than a misjudged stoppage in the octagon. It just sucks all the life out of a contest, making whatever amounts of good work that came before it practically irrelevant. And in the case of Ben Askren versus Robbie Lawler, man, did Herb Dean fumble the bag. Askren was initially mounting an insane comeback after being on the verge of a TKO loss, only to latch on to a bulldog choke that seemingly put Robbie out. Except he didn't. And once Herb realized his mistake, the entire arena were left wondering what the hell went wrong. 
And finally, we come to one of the most iconic bizarre moments in UFC history. Or at the very least, one of its funniest mishaps. On the long list of things to not do during an MMA bout, kicking over the ice bucket is right up there. And despite it being UFC champions Jose Aldo and Renan Brajeo who did it, hearing Joe Rogan shouting at them and telling them that someone ought to kick their asses never stops being funny. A 10 out of 10 moment in our books. Someone needs to kick their I can't ass. Fight. I, and Honey's saying, I can't fight with this ice I'm here. I'm looking at ice right here. I need to point it out. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Fight Focus. And for today's video, we will be covering some of the most creative knockouts in MMA history. Also, shout out to Swagonometry for giving us the video recommendation. Who doesn't love a good knockout? Just kidding, that shouldn't even be a question. We've seen a lot of fighters over the years with the extraordinary levels of talent showing their skills in an effort to render another man unconscious. The results are usually pleasing and terrific for the crowd, but desperation for the losing end. The whole fight turns into a mere 3 to 5 second scenario, and if you glimpse that particular knockout punch landing directly on the face, you won't regret missing the whole fight in return. Naturally, some fighters are better than others at doing this. Let's take a look at some of them. First up, Travis Brown versus Stefan Struve. Superman punches are a bit of an enigma in the fighter's repertoire. Most fighters might have it in their move set somewhere, but never really on it that much, and use it in their fights even less simply because of what's needed for execution, as well as the move often being easy to avoid for the opponent. Unless for Stefan Struve, who walked right into one. At UFC 130, Travis Brown landed one of the cleanest straight shots to the face you are likely to see, absolutely planting one right in the middle of the melon. What makes it so special is the fact they're heavyweights. The big boys aren't always known for their speed and agility in the cage, but Brown came out of nowhere. In a split second, he spotted Struve's forward movement, hands open, and then before he could even blink, he leaped up with the left foot and absolutely dropped them. Such speed and timing is usually reserved for the lighter divisions, but this is all class from often underrated Brown, and a name listed in our list. Next up, on to Jorge Masvidal vs Ben Askren. Jorge Masvidal's draw-dropping KO of Ben Askren has been officially clocked at 5 seconds, but he was out in 2, the time it took for his knee to become best friends with Askren's face. Jumping knees happen, often from the clinch as do running knees, but never was there a knockout like this, ever before, over before you knew it had started. Even John Anik was only halfway through the opening sponsorship plug when Joe Rogan interrupted to belt out his trademark yell. Fight clock is brought to you by Mo oh! Oh! There was just as much skill involved as there was luck. Masvidal did practice sprinting straight at his opponent with a knee, but if Askren didn't duck into it or move his arms out for takedown, then it might have ended very poorly for the Florida native. There was a lot of power, timing, and skill involved, with the rushing your opponent style of opening to a fight often too big a risk for a fighter in the opening seconds, and finish inside 10 seconds of any kind is hard to come by. A flying knee knockout isn't that common either, putting them both together is about as unique as it gets. Who's up next? Next we have Edson Barbosa vs Terry Adam. Edson Barbosa is a serious legend of kicking. He loves to kick. He loves to finish with kicks. He would throw those legs around you all day if you let him. We're talking about a guy who had finished fights via head kick, body kicks, and leg kicks three times. That's right, he pummeled and destroyed a fighter's legs so badly that they had to give up and take the TKO loss on three separate occasions. You get the point. His best, however, was reserved for poor Tommy Adam. After going low with the leg kick, Barbosa took a couple steps back, watched Adam's head drop his hands, then produced one of the cleanest and creative head kicks in MMA history, sinking his heel into the jaw for the first wheel kick finish the UFC has ever seen. It was as beautiful as it was destructive. Adam dropped to the floor, was made better by Rogan's commentary timing. Fighters like JDS and Vitor Belfort had utilized the spinning wheel kick since, but nothing like the day Edson Barbosa dropped jaws in the cage and in the crowd. This is probably one of the most cleanest kicks you've ever seen. Up next, Shoney Carter vs Matt Serra. Coming to the thriller, Shoney Carter vs Matt Serra. UFC 31 was a strange card in hindsight. The show was headlined by an already aged Randy Couture in his first heavyweight title defense against journeyman Pedro Rizzo and what would be his second of three unsuccessful attempts to take the belt. Pat Militech's run with the welterweight title came to the end thanks to Carlos Newton, who would lose the championship in his next fight anyway. Chuck Liddell picked up a knockout win. Even a young BJ Penn was on the card, making his MMA debut in the prelims. And amongst all that, sitting four fights down for the top of the card and still years away from a much nicer career highlight of his, and one of the all-time greatest single punches the company has ever seen. Just the sound of the impact alone is enough, but the vision of Sarah's unsuspecting face meeting Carter's back fist going a thousand miles an hour was one of the company's earlier genuine highlight reel knockouts. Next up, 
Lyoto Machida vs Randy Couture. This came out of absolutely nowhere. Not quite the jaw-dropping highlight that legend Randy Couture was hoping for or deserved to the end of his career on, but when he came across Brazilian magician Lyoto Machida at UFC 129, few could have expected to see such a moment of brilliance in the cage. Machida's unique style was on full display here, slightly adjusting the more traditional front kick into the, that of the crane kick, most famously known by the Karate Kid film in 1984, and it paid off. Couture barely had time to react to Machida's subtle skip and hop off the left foot before the right came up and straight through the gate, dropping the former champion instantly. The natural was incredibly pushing 48 years of age, and expectations weren't high for this fight, despite coming off the back of three straight wins. Machida would utilize the front kick again seven years later against Vitor Belfort, who himself had already been dropped by the same move from Anderson Silva in his career. None of them really compares to Machida's first though. Next up, we got Dong Hyung Kim vs John Hathaway. The sound and impact is worth the price of admission alone on this one. The point of the elbow is one of the most devastating parts of the human body when used as a weapon. Even impact on the elbow can be razor blades causing crazy cuts and gashes to happen on the forehead. We've seen this so many times in the UFC and MMA. The pointed force of impact and hardness of the bone is one of the main reasons the controversial 12 to 6 elbow is a legal move in the UFC. The spinning elbow however is still wide open for use and on this occasion, Korean veteran Dong Hyun Kim uses the full effect. A lot like the spinning back fist mentioned earlier, the elbow takes an outstanding bit of timing and guesswork to pick the opponent's movement that will open them up to the shot coming through. Luckily for John Hathaway, if he can be called lucky, the elbow caught his cheek and upper jaw instead of the nose, which would have demolished his face and easily done permanent damage to the beak. In a sad twist, this knockout loss from 2014 was Hathaway's last fight in MMA despite him being only 27 years old at the time, having suffered ongoing health issues since I haven't allowed him to get back into the cage. Another time we've seen the 12-6 elbow was John Jones, who actually lost the fight due to this illegal move. Next, we're here to see Matt Hughes versus Carlos Newton. Carlos Newton and Matt Hughes produced one of the most confusing, controversial, and one of the nastiest slam finishes in UFC history. Newton ended a three-year reign at Pat Militic atop the welterweight division at UFC 31. Unfortunately for him, his lawyer wouldn't last long. In the second round, Hughes was caught in the hold but fought his way to his feet, lifting Newton up and against the cage to release some of the pressure but to no avail, eventually passing out where he stood. The problem with the end result came after Hughes was unconscious, dropping Newton headfirst into the mat from quite a height. Newton was knocked out cold on impact. Referee John McCarthy simply didn't see Hughes had already passed out, thinking he slammed Newton down on purpose. When they both hit the floor, McCarthy saw Newton out like a light. He called the fight off in Hughes' favor. In all the chaos, Hughes could be heard asking McCarthy what happened and telling his corner after the fight that I was out. So he did admit that he was out though. Next we have Nico Price versus James Vick. A contender for knockout of the year in 2019, Nico Price's astonishing KO on James Vick was the second upkick finish in UFC history. Vick's fourth loss on the trot, three of them being knockouts, came in incredibly unexpected fashion less than two minutes into the first round. With Price on his back, Vick looked to jostle for a better position out of the full guard by standing up onto his feet. First mistake. He then left Price's right leg completely free when he leaned down towards his opponent looking to land some strikes. Second and last mistake, Price threw his heel straight into the jaw of Vic, turning the lights off in an instant as he flopped to the floor. Some in the arena and watching on TV even said they could hear the sound of Vic's jaw cracking on impact. Dude, imagine hearing somebody's jaw crack. Coming to Gary Goodrich versus Paul Herrera. Maybe not the flashiest nor the most exciting, but Gary Goodrich knocking out Paul Herrera at UFC 8 has to go down as one of the most unique and abstruse finishes of all time. Just 13 seconds is all it took, and what was the MMA debut of both fighters? In the first round of the UFC 8 tournament, wrestler Herrera and Trinidadian Canadian Kok Sulwan artist Goodrich looked to be one of the more even contests on the card, pitting two mat based fighters together. Herrera shot for the leg, Goodrich dropped onto, then rolled him all within a few seconds, locking both his arms up across his legs and chest. Goodrich had the opening he was after, but not the finish anyone was expecting. Instead of cranking on a possible armbar, Goodrich released right arm and planted it on the elbow right side of Herrera's head, then another one, and another one, and another one, and four more before referee John McCarthy could call it and break them apart. One look at the footage you can see that Herrera is out, after, is out after just one strike. To get a knockout finish in that position is something astounding in itself, and the speed and the brutality of eight elbows in barely three seconds and you have the most unique knockout in UFC history. And now moving toward one of the most creative knockouts to ever be witnessed in the world of MMA is brought to you by Anthony Showtime Pettis. Anthony was set to fight Benson Henderson at WEC 53 in Phoenix, Arizona. This was Benson's title defense for the lightweight division. During this fight, Anthony did one of the craziest knockouts to ever be seen before. Check it out. Even though it knocked Benson Henderson down on his butt, it still did not stop the fight. The fight ended up with Anthony winning via unanimous decision 
causing him to dethrone Benson and receive the belt for the lightweight division. Some argue that this might be the greatest knockout in MMA history. Just the creativity of running off the cage to kick your opponent, that's a video game move. Alright MMA fans, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, make sure to hit the notification bell, and don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Also, don't forget to comment below what video you want to see next. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Fight Focus. And for today's video, we will be covering the greatest revenge moments in MMA. Also, if you enjoy this video, please make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and comment what video you want to see next. Let's get to it. We all love a good revenge story. Nothing feels better than watching a fighter get their own back against the opponent who bullied them. The internet is essentially made up of these kinds of videos. One simple search on YouTube for Bully Gets Own will literally bring thousands of results. MMA fighters have the opportunity to face the people that have antagonized them in the past. For this video, we have compiled a list of instances where MMA fighters got revenge on their opponents by avenging a loss or displaying an excellent example of karma. Number 12, Anzor Ajiev. Bakosevich talked a little trash leading up to the fight and was often a little abrasive. He played a video showing himself and his team flipping off Ajiev at the way and he tried to intimidate Ajiev, which resulted in Ajiev shoving him. And at KSW 33, the most satisfying back beatdown occurred. Placing all the way across, oh he's looking for a choke, Will! This might be it, he's gonna go out in a minute. That looks really deep, there's the top! It's a top up! Ajiev controlled the fight throughout the match. By the third round, he forced a submission for the victory, and Ansor got Bakosevich a taste of his own medicine after the fight by making him tap out. Number 11, Javid Basharat. Calling another fighter names is normal in the game unless you call them a terrorist. MMA fighter Javid Basharat choked Oren Callen, the opponent who called him a terrorist just the day before the bout. That is tight. He's got RJ in a win that impressed UFC boss Dana White so much he handed the Afghan athlete a contract. Basharat appeared calm despite the slur, which happened during the weigh-in ceremony ahead of their bantamweight match under the Contender Series promotional banner in Las Vegas. Number 10, Brock Lesnar. Despite dominating the opening moments of that 81 bout, Lesnar was caught with a knee bar and forced to tap out. Before and after this fight, Mir had mocked Brock's professional wrestling background. For MMA, Frank Mir, you're mine. Let's go. You can see that Lesnar was seething at all of this and wanted nothing more than to pummel Mir's face in. That's it. Try to finish it. That's it. Her penis there, and it is all over. He's out. Brock Lesnar. And that's exactly what he did upon the two stepping into the octagon once more. In that second fight, Brock got the second round TKO victory and then proceeded to angrily get in Mir's face as Lesnar celebrated his bloody revenge. Maybe this was also because he said he wanted to kill Brock. Number 9, Tony Johnson. Russian MMA star Mahamad Fakhayev attacked ACA heavyweight champion Tony Johnson in a pre-fight interview. The Chechen athlete decided on a scuffle after the words of his opponent, but the fight was stopped by the representatives of the fighter. But the pre-fight brawl would be the exact opposite as Tony landed a happy meal right at the edge of Muhammad's pie hole. <laughs> A few seconds of ground and pound and the fight would be over as soon as the Russian fighter would be borderline put into a coma. Number 8 Rampage Jackson The ominously named axe murderer destroyed Jackson in their previous two pride fights, most famously brutally finishing his opponent at 2004's Pride 28 show with a vicious knee after vicious knee. Four years later, Rampage would finally get some semblance of revenge on Silva when the pair met for the third time at UFC 92. Rampage with a quick jab. Just three minutes into the first round of that contest, Quentin Jackson would get his long sought W over Vanderlei Silva, and what a win it was with a left hook leaving Silva out cold on the canvas. Number 7 Mansoor Barnawi This fight headlined at Road FC 52 on Jeju Island. After this ignorant face off, you want Mansoor to win. And Quan A. Sol came out with a very confusing game plan of rushing in and trying to fight Barnawi in the clinch. Follows in the pocket of Mansoor Barnawi. It's going in deeper. 
Mansour is just taking his time. Look at that. Almost so it. Oh! And there it is. While trying to scramble out against the fence, Quan had his back taken and got himself into the most dangerous position he could be in. Quan defended as long as he could, but there was no shaking off the ground specialist. Once the arm was finally sunk into the neck region and the hips were fully outstretched, Quan had the option to either tap or nap. Number 6. Mirko Krokop just 15 years ago, the Brazilian shocked the world by beating the master at his own game. Gonzaga scored a brutal head kick KO against the Croatian, who had become famous for the head-seeking missiles attached to the bottom of his legs. It looked like Gonzaga was going to get another victory over Krokop in the main event of UFC Krakow as he dominated him for the first two rounds. However, the course of the fight changed in the third stanza when Krokop rocked his opponent with sharp elbows during a clinch at the fence. Krokop then finished the fight by unleashing some devastating ground and pound until the referee had seen enough and awarded him the TKO victory. Number 5 Rose Nama Yunus it's fair to say that the whole MMA world was hoping that Rose Nama Yunus got revenge on Joanna Jacek. You know what? You are not stronger mentally. You are mentally unstable and you are broken already and I will break you in the fight. Of course, Jacek had always been one to try and stir the pot with controversial comments designed to get into the head of her opponent. It's Jacek. Well, Rose... Oh! Thankfully, that UFC 217 contest saw that ridiculously calm Rose get the first round TKO win, take Joanna's title belt, and bring the Polish fighter's perfect MMA record to a crashing halt. Number 4 Yerkebul and Taktar Kazakh MMA fighter Yerkebul and Taktar fought Abdul Aziz Sadbuldiev before their fight at the Octagon 27 tournament. These guys already fought though. Three months before, Taktar lost to a choke. During the duel, Yerkebulan's views were pushed by his rival from Uzbekistan. In response, the Kazakhstani kicked the opponent, after which a fight broke out between them. But Taktar would get the last laugh as he would start the fight with a flying knee and then eventually hit his opponent so hard to where his mouthpiece would get sent to orbit. Number 3 George St. Pierre Towards the end of the round, Hughes was on top of St. Pierre. As GSP went for a Kimura, Hughes countered by spinning around and going for an armbar, which he secured at 4 minutes and 59 seconds of round 1. Then at UFC 65, St. Pierre once again challenged for the welterweight title, but it would go a little differently this time. In the second round, St. Pierre hit Hughes with a head kick that dropped him. He finished up with a few punches and the fight was over at 1 minute and 25 seconds of round 2, and St. Pierre was the welterweight champion. Number 2, Habib Habib Nurmagomedov. Habib Nurmagomedov got the best sort of revenge on Conor McGregor. He beat the absolute shit out of the Notorious at UFC 229. From trash talking, the ante was upped when Conor and his group of pals attacked a bus carrying Khabib at UFC 223, smashing one of the windows and causing injuries to several of those inside. The Irishman mocked Nurmagomedov, his family, his faith, and anything that Conor could use to try and get under the skin of his opponent. I'm gonna go like yeah, my last bus. fight. Happy birthday, like, the bus. I, I don't drink. Why don't you drink? I don't drink. Why don't you drink? For Khabib, revenge came as he tapped out Conor McGregor in the fourth round of their Las Vegas battle. Even then, animosity was so bad that the pair and their teams embarked on a post-fight brawl that saw both fighters suspended. Number 1. Michael Bisping for Dan Henderson, his sweet revenge was landing one of the greatest shots in UFC history to claim a KO victory over his trash-talking rival Michael Bisping. But not just your standard KO win, this was one of those rare shots that leaves an opponent in a twitching, cold-cocked heap on the mat. Of course, the count would eventually avenge this loss a little down the line when Bisping successfully retained his UFC middleweight championship against Hendo at UFC 204. The contest ended in a unanimous decision victory for Bisping and what proved to be the final fight of Henderson's legendary career. And that right there concludes this video. If you made it this far, let us know how we did in the comments below. Alright MMA fans, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, make sure to hit the notification bell, and don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Also, don't forget to comment below what video you want to see next. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Fight Focus. And for today's video, we will be covering the craziest Save by the Bell moments in MMA. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and comment what video you want to see next. Let's get to it. In MMA, of course, getting saved by the bell refers to a completely different thing though, and is more of a colloquial term and not really referring to any specific rule like it is in boxing. 
For this video, we've compiled a list of instances where MMA fighters were in trouble and were almost losing the fight till the bell came in and saved them from having the fight finished earlier. Some lucky fighters were even able to come back and win after this ordeal. Number 12, Michael Bisping. Three rounds into the biggest win of his career, Bisping found himself dazed, confused, and down on the mat. Oh, there's the tie clinch. Oh, it's been down. Oh, oh, down. Oh, oh, down. Oh, he dropped a great fighter with a left hand in both of the first two rounds, pounded him on the ground, and generally looked like he was well on his way to victory. One moment of distraction changed it all, a knee crashing into his head as he tried to communicate with the referee to retrieve a lost mouthpiece. The bell rang as he laid on the mat, and Silva leapt onto the cage to celebrate what appeared to be a stunning comeback victory, but Bisping saved by the bell was not done yet. Number 11, David Baxter. Baxter was apparently choked unconscious at the end of the first round, was brought back awake by his corner, and then went on to win via TKO in the second round. This was so crazy because the fighter was out cold right when the bell rang and was able to muster up enough energy to get him back in the fight. The officiating and oversight by medical staff was called into question for allowing Baxter to continue fighting. The Massachusetts State Athletic Commissioner viewed the bout and overruled it a no contest. Number 10, Igor Spirit. The title tilt was not without adversity. Igor knocked Big Dash down in the opening round on two different occasions. The Ahmad fight team representative used his ground game to survive and nearly submitted the champion at the end of the round. Having been saved by the bell, Igor escaped and made it to the second round. Unfortunately though, this wouldn't make much of a difference since Igor would then lose to a TKO the very next round and lose his belt. Number 9, Yoel Romero. Again! Romero was on the verge of losing to Tim Kennedy when the Cuban was literally saved by the bell. He then made a comeback which went down as one of the most infamous wins in recent UFC history. All for the wrong reasons. Romero, after being saved by the bell at the end of round 2, landed a wonderful two-piece combination to drop Tim Kennedy in the opening moments of the final stanza and continued to bludgeon the military vet until referee Big John McCarthy stepped in to end the bout. Number 8, Giga Chikadze. Huge oh oh my gosh. Oh, down he goes. Down. And a big punch. This could be it. Two and one. And oh, oh, Chikadze responded in spurts and looked like a viable threat from beginning to end, but he could match neither Cater's output nor his determination. The Massachusetts native emptied himself in the fifth round where he slashed away at a battered and bloody Chikadze with elbows from both sides. The King's MMA ultimately collapsed under the final barrage and might have been the victim of a finish had the bell not sounded, sweeping in and helping him out. Number 7, Chad Mendez. Mendez. Uppercut. Chad still has not recover. Oh, oh my! That was way after the buzzer. Aldo dropped Mendez with a combination after the first round bell and it arguably could have affected Mendez's performance the rest of the fight. It was a clean two-piece combo that had Mendez hurt but not completely out of the fight. Both Aldo and referee Mark Goddard both said afterwards that they could not hear the sound of the bell because it was so loud inside the arena. Aldo was also not penalized at all for the rules infraction. Number 6, Jake Shields. Miller dominated the third sinking in a rear naked choke near the end of the round. Shields was saved by the bell because if the round would have lasted just a few more seconds, Shields would likely not have made it. In the end, Jake Shields would end up as the winner as boos would be heard around the arena, but there's no doubt that the bell had saved Shields big time. Number 5, Donald Cerrone. Oh, the flurry here. Oh, hey, round him. one! Hurt Cerrone! That is it! Herb Dean comes in and... The potential game changer came just before the bell when Masvidal dropped Cerrone with a counter right left combo and then poured on more shots as Cerrone fell to the canvas. Excellent body kick from Cerrone, but Masvidal unleashes a counter. He was waiting on it. 
Number four, Robert Whitaker. A very close round, a big action. Oh. Oh, big knockdown. That's it. Wait, is that the end of the round? Okay. Although the Reaper had some success in the first round, caution to the wind approach, he was knocked down at the end of it, being saved by the bell. Soon enough, in the second round, Robert Whitaker was knocked out by the last style bender and dethroned as the middleweight king. There was no doubt in anyone's mind that Robert had been fortunate to have the bell come in at that exact moment, because the fight might have ended in the first round if it hadn't. Number three, TJ Dillashaw. Be considered the same. They do have that same fighters. Oh! Big knockdown for Cody. There's the horn to end round one. And the 31-year-old got the bragging rights between the two after coming back from the brink of being knocked out himself in the first round at a sold-out Madison Square Garden. Cody landed some massive shots early in the fight, and his rival was saved by the Bella after being clipped on the chin. But it was Dillashaw that came back in the second, knocking the 26-year-old down with a left high kick. Shortly after he landed a right hook which floored his opponent before jumping on him, the referee was forced to call out the bout. Number two, Jens Pulver. Seen all the skills of the arm bar attempt by DJ. He he's keeps gonna not going to get time. those hips forward. No, nope, he's going to run out of time too. He was working towards it, but he had run out. Pulver tried to scramble out from under the grappling phenom, but ended up giving up mount. The audience erupted as Penn rained down punches and attempted an armbar submission. With less than a minute left, the challenger was still delivering shot after shot while the champion threw his legs up in vain trying to sweep out. 10 seconds left, Penn had gotten a hold of an arm, Pulver defended as long as he could but the horn would sound as Penn extended the arm. Obviously, Jens did tap but the round was already over, Pulver was literally saved by the bell. Number 1 CJ Hamilton Belly to back, suplex by Magomedov. Pounding CJ Hamilton. Magomedov nearly finished Hamilton in the first round. Magomedov nailed the signature suplex and swarmed Hamilton with punches. The referee got close to stopping it, but the bell saved Hamilton. Magomed Magomedov made a statement against CJ Hamilton. After taking Hamilton's back in round one, Magomedov rained down punches that hurt his opponent. While Hamilton was saved by the bell, he was quickly tapped out with a rear naked choke in the second frame. And that right there concludes this video. If you made it this far, let us know how we did in the comments below. Alright MMA fans, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, make sure to hit the notification bell, and don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Also, don't forget to comment below what video you want to see next. MMA is probably the most insane sport on this planet. And trust us, these 20 totally crazy moments are just on another level entirely. And what better place to kick off a list like this than with the biggest star in the sport, Conor McGregor. Now the build up to his trilogy fight with Dustin Poirier was pretty insane for the most part, but after breaking his leg mid-fight, seeing Conor sit there, body clearly going into shock, and he's still roaring insults at Poirier and his wife Jolie. That was a villainous moment that truly has no equal in MMA. You can fake energy like this, sure, but doing it when your foot is practically hanging off the joint? That takes a true wild man. From that wild post-fight moment, we move to the quickest KO in the history of the UFC. The fans were rightly excited when the UFC decided to book a matchup between Jorge Masvidal and Ben Askren. It was the classic stylistic pairing, wrestler versus striker. And boy, did these guys hate each other. But Jorge had a master game plan up his sleeve, and when he anticipated Ben's intentions to shoot in for a takedown, Jorge met him with a huge flying knee, closing the show in a record-breaking five seconds. From the brilliant violence of Masvidal, we move now to a truly horrific and totally bizarre fight-ending sequence. Shane Burgos is known for his amazing ability to absorb punishment, and after eating yet another hard shot from Edson Barbosa, he seems to be perfectly fine. Then, in what can only be described as a very delayed reaction, he fell to the canvas a few seconds later, instantly losing his equilibrium before the ref called the fight off. A uniquely ugly and worrying fight-ending moment. We couldn't make a list of insane moments in MMA and leave off one of the most determined trash talks alive. 
Colby Covington didn't have much of a standing within the sport before his fight with Damian Maia, but after turning in a dominant performance in front of a Brazilian crowd, he took to the mic and proceeded to take huge shots at the people of Brazil and their country. Shit knocked him out! Brazil, you're a dog! All you filthy animals suck! I got one thing to say! Tyrone Woodley, I'm coming for you! If you don't answer the front door, I'm gonna knock you in and I'm gonna take what's mine! Talk about a ballsy move, right? Well, his gamble worked, and in that moment, despite being the most hated man in the entire nation, a star was undeniably born. Look, this next one was one of those KOs that you kinda had to be there for, but at the time there was no fighter in MMA more renowned for his head-kicking ability than the great Mirko Krokop. And after a long and celebrated run in Pride, seeing him debut in the UFC with a win was thrilling. But when the time came to take on Gabriel Gonzaga, absolutely nobody predicted that Krokop would lose through his own signature technique. Yes, that's right. Gonzaga managed to Krokop Krokop. But speaking of head kicks that made an impact, how about the very first fight in the history of the UFC? Gerard Gordeau vs. Taylor Tuli was the fight that started it all. A lanky Dutch kickboxer against a behemoth sumo wrestler. And after grounding Tuli in a striking exchange, Gordo landed a head kick that KO'd the sumo star stiff, sending one of his teeth flying into the crowd. MMA obviously sharpened up its image over the years, but man, this was a brutal start. If there's one cardinal sin within the sport of mixed martial arts, it's talking about Michael Chiesa's mom. Or at least that's what Chiesa himself seemed to think. I know his mama got tickets, so it's shut the f about, hey, you can, don't talk about my mom for one. Don't you ever talk about my mom. Don't you ever talk about my mom. Don't you ever talk about my mom. This dude totally flipped out when Kevin Lee mentioned his mother during a back and forth at this press conference. Next thing we knew, these two lightweights were headed straight at one another. It was a wild scene that just came out of nowhere, during a time when too many people were trying to act like Conor McGregor. And speaking of Conor McGregor, anyone who watched this sport through the Jose Aldo era of the featherweight division will know just how difficult it was to predict this fight coming in. On one hand, Aldo was the pound-for-pound -pound king, a seemingly unbeatable fighter. But Conor clearly had something very special. What we did not expect is that McGregor would go out there and dust off Aldo in just 13 seconds, a record-breaking KO that brought a decade-long run of dominance to an end. Once upon a time, John Jones was seen as a real beacon of light in the sport, or at least he tried to present himself in that way. A clean-cut, clean-living man who was totally fixated on his progress. But when the cracks started to show, man, the results were shocking. And who can forget when he thought the cameras were off and proceeded to very coldly threaten Daniel Cormier on live TV. Let's try that, John. I'm not, talking, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying I will fight you. I said I will kill you. John, do you think, do you, so, so, John, do you think I'm just going to sit there and let you kill me, John? And we're giving you a two-for-one on Jones and Cormier madness here, because once their rivalry had truly kicked off, the media day during fight week was left in a scene of total chaos when John and DC got a little too close for comfort during a face-off. And as soon as Jones saw his opportunity, he did not hold back, taking down the entire stage with him as he sought to hurt Cormier as much as he could. Speaking of infamous brawls, Strike Force had been working tooth and nail to get themselves a TV deal at the height of their fame. And on their very first event, a big win for Jake Shields was totally interrupted by a very determined Jason Mayhem Miller, who gate-crashed the party and proceeded to ignite a massive brawl involving Shields, Gilbert Melendez, the Diaz brothers, and more. Talk about making a splash on your TV debut, but honestly, at this stage in MMA's growth, it was not a good look. We've covered a lot of wild MMA upsets on this channel, but no one shocking victory has it quite as hard as Matt Sarah's KO of George St. Pierre. The fight was supposed to be a novelty. Sarah had won a season of The Ultimate Fighter designed to give some aging veteran one last shot at glory, a fight with a UFC champion. Somehow, some way, Matt Sarah earned the fight and totally ripped up the script. Seriously, this was just a different level of upset. The 
Israel Adesanya and Alex Pereira story was one that crossed over between two different combat sports. And somehow, despite having two fights in kickboxing, Alex Pereira did the unthinkable, rising up through his new home in MMA, reaching a title shot, and then after getting handled for four rounds by Izzy, he proceeded to TKO him in the fifth and final round. If that was a movie script, you'd almost think it was two on the nose. Speaking of movie script moments, this right here might just be the most dramatic finish in UFC history. Leon Edwards was beaten, he was bloodied, and thoroughly outclassed by the pound-for-pound pound number one across the first 24 minutes. Sure, he had a good moment in round one, but other than that, it was a tough night. But even as the commentators were writing him off, he found a head kick that was sent from the gods, KOing the world's greatest fighter stiff to win the UFC welterweight title. A truly rocky moment inside the cage. Khabib Nurmagomedov is a pretty chill guy a mature figure who prides himself on his ability to remain calm and methodical, even if he fights like a total marauder. But when Conor McGregor attacked his team, his family, his culture, his religion, and basically every shred of his identity, his cool and calm demeanor only lasted so long. And after dominating McGregor at UFC 229, all his angst came to the surface in the single most shocking post-fight scene in MMA history. A brawl ensued that took place in the crowd and in the octagon. And though Khabib was criticized for his actions, this moment arguably turned him into the single biggest star in the sport. Has there ever been a more powerful puncher in this sport than Francis Ngannou? Maybe, maybe not. But his KO of Alistair Overeem was probably the hardest punch we have ever seen thrown inside the UFC octagon. He hit the ream so hard that he damn near took him off his feet a brutal knockout that made Nganu an instant star. From one of the hardest punches ever thrown in the octagon, we now move to one of the most controversial. Paul Daly is a guy who can hit with the force of a heavyweight, but over three rounds against Josh Koscheck, he struggled. It didn't help that Koscheck was clearly cheating in the fight, and even faked being hit by an illegal knee to get Daly in trouble. So, when the three rounds came to their conclusion, Daly decided to sucker punch Koshek, shocking the world and promptly losing his UFC contract in the process. To this day, we still can't believe that Michael Bisbing actually rose up and became middleweight champion, and the fact that he did it by KOing a guy like Luke Rockhold? Insane. Rockhold had all the confidence in the world coming into this one, and it made sense. He had just beaten the great Chris Weidman in a thoroughly dominant fashion. So why should he be afraid of a mid-tier fighter like Bisbing? Well, it didn't take long for him to find out. An all-time great upset win. On the long list of truly insane UFC title fights, Yuri Prohatska's wild five-round war with Glover Teixeira has to be right up there. Not only did this Czech samurai manage to pull off the comeback of the year by somehow finishing Glover in the final minute of this 25-minute classic, but he also submitted the most prolific submission artist in the history of the light heavyweight division. Seriously, if you haven't watched this one, you gotta check it out. And finally, we come to one of the most shocking upsets we have ever had the pleasure of witnessing. Ronda Rousey was on top of the world by the time her seventh bantamweight title defense came. In her path was Holly Holm, a talented former boxer but a totally unheralded contender compared to the great Rousey. However, when the time came to fight, the world was left stunned when Holm basically dominated the entire fight, making a mockery of Ronda's abilities before putting her out with a deft head kick. <laughs> 